Dr. Malachi Martin, ex-Jesuit, former exorcist and one-time advisor to three popes, is currently a best-selling author. As a premier investigator of clandestine politics and unlikely alliances of popes and cardinals, his novels offer rare insights into the men who guide nearly a billion people in faith and broker the destinies of countries and continents. As a member of the Vatican Intelligence Network, I didn't know they had one, Martin helped extend the church into Iron Curtain countries in 1964, concerned about the corrupting influences of power. Martin was released from his vows of poverty and obedience after 25 years as a Jesuit. He left Rome for New York, where he did odd jobs until a Guggenheim Fellowship enabled him to write his first bestseller, Hostage to the Devil. It was followed by the final conclave, Vatican, Three Popes, and the Cardinal, the Keys of This Blood, the Jesuits, and apparently many others. He's a very prolific author. Uh, to give you some idea of how he is reviewed... Forbes magazine said, No spiritual journey is complete without a Vatican page turner by Malachi Martin. Uh, Sacramento Bee said, It is to Martin's credit that his real life uh, fictional cardinals have flesh, blood, and bone, sometimes the heart of a South Chicago ward healer. The Dallas Morning News said, In biblical times, they would have called him a prophet. Publishers Weekly said it is impossible not, not to be impressed with Martin's profound knowledge of men, issues, and history. I could go on and on and on and on. For 30 years, as a Catholic priest, uh, Dr. Martin uh, did exorcisms. The mythology or the, the, the legend or the doctrine or the teaching, whichever you want to regard it as, it, it holds that there is a major evil spirit called Lucifer and there is another one called Satan and they are accompanied by or they are among uh, many many smaller demons and these uh, do attack and possess human beings in their will and their uh, intellect uh, that's the general sort of picture you get from books and studies and doctrine and teaching about the devil and about evil. And I think, as I, 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 what I was saying was that I think at the edge of our consciousness there's always the fear that perhaps indeed uh, there is such a thing if we That's don't right. believe it. We Catholics do hold it and Christians in general do hold it. But there's a consciousness that there's some evil spirit at work. It could be in our world and we're afraid of it. Uh, and that it can, according to the belief in many parts of the world and in many parts of history of man, there is, a, there is the possibility of being possessed, of one's body being dominated by such an evil spirit and uh, used for nefarious ends. Uh, they are all fallen angels. The idea is that once upon a time, one third of the angels of God revolted against him and were condemned to hell and became demons. The purpose of the rebellion was simply the ambition of one spirit, Lucifer, the son of the dawn, that's what his name means, uh, the light bearer or the son of the dawn, who said, uh, I will not serve, I will be equal to God. And he was opposed by one spirit who said, who is like unto God? And that's the name of Michael, Mikael, who is like unto God. Mm -hmm. And there was this supposedly this huge battle between the spirits and the demons lost and Michael and those fighting for God won and forever the, 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 the fallen angels, those who rebelled are condemned to hell and condemned to, uh, to be evil and to promote evil amongst human beings the teaching is that once upon a time God envisaged the world inhabited by men and women and served by angels. But when Lucifer and Satan and the other demons, then angels, were asked to co collaborate and cooperate and serve human beings, especially one particular human being who would be God, namely Christ Jesus of Nazareth, they said no. 
we are angels. We are superior to these material beings. We haven't got their limitations, and we don't die, and we haven't got material bodies. We are pure spirit. Uh, so they, 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 they were destined originally to serve human beings, and they refused. There is going to be an Antichrist, and I think the best thing we can do is talk about his public appearance. Already? Because he may already be in existence. Uh, for me to say he is in existence would immediately provoke the questions, where is he and what is he doing? Yes. Now I want to avoid that. Yes. Uh, but there, there, he will be manifest publicly within a reasonable amount of time. Most people who are 20-something or 30-something will come across Antichrist in their life. We will know him by two main qualities. First of all, he will arrive at a time when we as a race have what looks like insuperable problems. Supposing we have, we discover we have insuperable, really insuperable environmental problems. Yeah, yes, sir. Supposing we find we have insuperable uh, uh, health problems, a disease, yes, wasting, sir. wasting nation after nation. Mm. That's the first thing. He will have solutions for those problems. He will have wise solutions, solutions that are real solutions. And number two, his, the result of his, of his intervention and his, the, the results of his, of his solutions will be such that people will say, you must be God. And he will accept that attribute. He will accept that. Yes, he will accept that. That will be, those are the three marks of the Antichrist. I think there is a case of radiation. I think that uh, we are being radiated in such a way that it distorts the chemical balance of our system, our mental system. And that slowly but surely, a vast section of the public is being dulled, doesn't see what's happening, Yes. doesn't realize what is being done to them.